Good day, everyone, and welcome to Aussie Tech. It's episode 626, the 28th of March, 2019. How are all going? Hope you had a good week. Uh, I'm Glenn Goodman, and I'm here this week uh, joined by Joe and Jordan this week to host the show, and we're going to talk about uh, some news and views that have taken our interest throughout the week on the tech news that has been happening around Australia and the world. Uh, you can... Oh, I was going to say, we are brought to you by Aussie Tech Heads Web Hosting, and you can find them at AT, or find us at athwebhosting.com.au. Uh, reg, uh, oh, I'm losing my spot already. It's only the start of the show. We operate on the SSD drives, immediate activation, SSL certificates, all that sort of stuff. Uh, email hosting uh, from uh, IMAP, you know, through ter- terrestrial IMAP hosting and also Office 365. Uh, easy install of WordPress at Joomla and Drupal. So great cPanel access. You get all the bells and whistles to make sure that you can create the website of your dreams. And we also brought to you by startnewcompany.com.au. You can register your company fast, easy, and securely with ASIC. Grab the, uh, you get the ASIC uh, certificate of registration at the end. You get all your documentation and it saves in the, your account on the site. Uh, and if you want to come back later, you can and uh, print it all out again. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, come and startnewcompany.com.au. Why go to an accountant that will might charge you two thousand when you can register your company uh, for around five hundred and seventy eight dollars? Okay, uh, this week you can call us if you like. We're going to trial the call in situation. Now I'm going to repeat the number throughout the show cause only if you're watching live, obviously. So it's o two eight zero one five two zero double eight eight. So o two. Eight zero one five two zero double eight. So what we'll do is, uh, if you want to call in, just do a put a little chat in the live in this Facebook live chat room, or the chat post or the video post, and just give us the last two digits of your phone number. Okay, so that will alert uh, Jordan, who will be our switch girl tonight, and he will be able to see who belongs to what number. So then we can pull you in and we know who you are. Okay, so uh, we've got heaps- that number again. The number is 0280152088. So get involved. All right. Uh, and I'll repeat that throughout the show. Uh, don't forget the Aussie Tech Radio, which you can uh, listen to wherever you are. Download the TuneIn Radio app and just search for Aussie Tech Radio. You can also go to the AussieTechRadio.com website. There's great podcasts on there like this one, uh, like the Aussie Mac Zone, the Tech Webcast, and there's heaps more. If there's anything uh, that you want to talk about, put it up in the Facebook page or make it a post and we'll uh, have a look at it and you never know. If we find it interesting, <laughs> come on and talk about it. You can. Ring us up and talk about it. YouTube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Ads, Aussie Tech Ads. Com. Au forward slash paper. Twice a day, a uh, little paper pops into your inbox or whatever. You can read it. It's not just all about tech news, about just general news, uh, sports and all that sort of stuff. It's quite interesting, quite clever how they put it all together. And uh, the show notes are at AussieTechHeads.com.au forward slash podcast. And uh, reach us on Twitter if you must, but uh, um, don't worry, I don't normally use it, so I'll be wasting your time. Just send me an email, glenn at aussietechheads.com.au, or we'll ask the boys in a minute where we can contact them at, so you can contact them if you want to come on the show and uh, be heard by the masses. You need a video, a webcam, and a mic, so um, just let me know if you want to do that, and we'll get you on. All right, let's say good day to uh, these guys. Hello, Joe. How are you going? I'm good, thanks, Glenn. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Very good. You're a little frozen in time there. That might catch up in a second. How are you, Jordan? You've been you've been frozen in time the whole time, Glenn. Uh, have I? Yeah, Ooh. sure. Yours is pretty frozen at the moment. But what if Facebook's working, you're fine. You're not frozen there. You're only frozen in Zoom. Are you frozen in uh, Facebook? I haven't seen Joe <laughs> pop over yet. No, oh, you're, not frozen. you're not frozen in Facebook. All right, well, let's see. Who's frozen in Facebook, though? There we go. I fixed it. There you go. See? I can fix these things on the run. How good's that? Well, well, you're still frozen. Nah, not <laughs> now. I'll be good now. Am I still frozen? In Zoom, you are. All right. Well, at least you guys aren't. So that's the main thing. Uh, so you'll just have to put up with a picture of me then. But I wonder I- if you'll age over the course of the show. <laughs> I'll be ageless now. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in, uh, in in mortality. Stasis. That's right. So, um, yeah, so how are you, Joe? How have you been going this week? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. That's good. You had a good week? I have. I've been busy doing some uh, video editing with my last uh, YouTube video that I'm going to put on soon. Excellent work. Where can we see those videos? Um, you can see them at joethegadgetsman.com forward slash YouTube. All right, and how do we email? What's your email address? How can we talk to you? Um, you can get me at, G- at joethegadgetsman at gmail.com. 
All right. And what about you, Jordan? What have you been up to? You weren't here last week. You've been busy, boy. Yeah, I've been flat out. I just can't seem to find enough time to sit down and have a chat with you, can I? I've been listening to the show in the car on All the way right. to and from work, trying to kind of get samples of what's happening so I can come back and still be kind of half relevant. <laughs> right. I've probably done so many things while I haven't been here. Well, um, look, we're, we're doing... I've been busy just installing... Um, this PA system at this venue that I play at occasionally. So yeah, good stuff. So uh, yeah, so well, this week we waited for you to come back to trial the call-in situation because all hands on deck for something new. So we'll see how we go with that. So uh, we go out live at seven p.m. Sydney Melbourne time, and uh, until next week, does that change? Oh, whenever daylight saving finishes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, we'll work it out. Yeah, if you work out, work yourself around 7 p.m. Uh, Sydney time, you'll be right. All right. Look, where are we going to start this week? I've got a little uh, little one about the NBN. Oh, and guess what? Finally, we are connected. I am connected. No, no not really, but it's available to be connected to me uh, now, right now. So I'm NBN. Yay, woo. But, uh, I was going to say, you shouldn't be frozen if you're on NBN. No, look, I don't know what froze me there. I think that must have been something about when we started the the live feed. It, something didn't like something. But I'm, but I'm recording okay here, so it'll come out. So as long as it's coming out on the Facebook, we're all good. Because it's coming out here perfect. You uh, should see the face you're making. <laughs> oh, no. In your frozen state. <laughs> Oh, you know what they say? Yes, the, all, all your eyes are squished up and your tongue's oh, hanging yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Your, ears, your ears are twisted and your hair's all crooked. Well, that's what they say, you know, hope the wind don't uh, change. Uh, yeah, so the NBN's available at my place. I haven't switched over to it yet. I'm more than likely going to have a chat to the Aussie broadband. Everyone seems to be recommending them around the place. Uh, and it is good to ring up and talk to an Aussie. I'll give you that tip for sure. And, yeah, look, the only thing that I'm sort of concerned about is the... Fox tell whether or not it gets cut off when the NBN gets put on. Everyone Telstra and Fox are telling me yes, but then then uh, but then you ring up again and they tell you the opposite. So you know, no one knows. And so I talk to Aussie Broadband and the rest of them, and I say, well, hasn't this happened before? Am I the first one <laughs> like that's had Fox connected over a you know over the K- the HFC while still having Telstra? And they go, no. I say, well. Talk to someone who's had it done, can you? But anyway, just where you're waiting. But anyway, other than that, uh, the NBN is to move is planning a move to kill off the 12 megabit broadband plan. So these changes, which could come into effect as early as May, they're part of a deliberate year-long campaign to make the 12 megabit per second broadband service less attractive. So obviously, uh, as you would know, 12 down, one up is very uh, well. That is slower than ADSL too, really. Because you can get, you, it depends where you are, you can pull more than 12 down on ADSL too. But, uh, so I don't even know why they really had this plan. They must have just offered it, offered it as just like cheapy, cheap as. I don't know why, just to get people in, I suppose. But uh, they'll see them, um, yeah, so they're going to finish up with the, the 12 down, one up service. The, most of the resellers with this plan, uh, most, most, most resellers with 12 meg offers in the market give users on average between 9 and 11 speeds in the evening. So the ACCC said that almost 1.2 million users on the 12 megabit plan as of February this year, which, is that, which equates to a quarter of all users connected to the NBN. That's quite a few, isn't it? That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that is quite a few. I mean, they, uh, they introduced it earlier on to, to uh, get people to sign up to the NBN, but... Um, um, yeah, it looks like they're, they're trying to push it at a higher speed now. Yeah, well, I think it's probably right that they should. Yeah, that's, that's right. So uh, from May, the options, if you are one of these people on a 12 megabit plan, your options will be stay with your existing service and just watch your performance die because <laughs> apparently they're going to um, just really start just shaping it and just doing all these things and quality control or whatever they call it and just, yeah, that service is just going to die. It's just, just going to be stuffed so you'll have to get off it uh, or you could upgrade to a 50 megabit service apparently new prices are coming out uh, and oh here we go this, this says upgrade to a 50 megabit service this assumes that your line is capable of supporting those speeds <laughs> so bad luck if it isn't uh, downloading or downgrade to what MBN is calling the entry level bundle <sighs> which is uh, barely dial up internet speeds that's just stupid why yeah. That's just wrong. I mean, 
most of the people who are on on the internet these days i'm not saying everyone but most of them are on they just want basic internet access and a lot of them are not going to stream any netflix or anything like that so they're just happy with a with a low connection and then they go and strangle it which makes it even mm. worse but what 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 is more stupid about this and look i i probably have to go back and read through the entire article a bit more carefully now that i've seen this stupidity but like why why kill off a 12 the, the, why kill off this uh, 12 megabit plan when you've got the dial-up plan there? Like, why wouldn't you kill the dial-up one off? If you want people to get off the slow ones, to kill the dial-up one off. I, don't, I just don't get it. It, it. it defies logic. I'd have to read that story and hopefully, it, again, and might uh, go further into why yeah, they're not... I think it might have something to do with the CVC performance. I mean, there's probably a whole heap of people who are on a, a 12 megabit plan taking up a CVC, which they can't actually... Um, you know, like the, the 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 bandwidth is limited by that 12 megabit plan, hmm. so therefore they can't get any more money off it. And if everyone stays on that plan, I guess the the problem is that they would never be able to get more money off anybody. Yes, well, it is all about the money. So uh, yeah, that was a common theme throughout the rest through that story. Was it's all it is all about the money. But anyway, so that's what's happening. So um, I don't think it would cost too much more. Hopefully, just to you know bob up to the next plan. And most of us. You know, here and probably everyone listening is probably just scoff at a at a twelve megabit plan anyway. So um, <laughs> it probably won't be affecting any of us. And if you're watching us on Facebook, you're probably not on the twelve down one up. Maybe you are. Uh, all right. Uh, so that's that's that. So there you go. I'm not sure when I'm gonna gonna uh, sign up to the NBN. Um, have to have a think. See, because because I, I suppose I'm not I'm not in too much of a hurry. I do want to do it because uh, at the moment I'm getting 115 down, which is awesome. Uh, but I'm only getting five up on a good day. So that's the up I really want. So do I want to upset everyone? I've got to do it in 18 months anyway, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, I, I think the biggest benefit for anyone going onto the NBN is that the upload speed is dramatically increased. Um, like you said, you know, some people would only get one megabit or, or even five in your case. But um, you'll find that people on the NBN will get you know, 15, 20 or even 30 megabit upload which mm. makes a big difference, especially, I think, for you, uh, Glenn, uh, with your video streaming. Yeah, well, I think, like, this show, say, when I put it onto YouTube, goes for an hour, and it takes me, I think the the edited copy comes out to be about a gig, so I'm uploading a gig to YouTube, and, yeah, it would take a good a good hour to upload, and if it goes for longer than an hour, it'll take, yeah, a bit longer than an hour to upload. And, you know, and most of the time I'm doing that while I'm trying to work, so that slows everything down as well. But, you know, it, it just gets up there after a while. And that's all right. So, yeah, but you're right. It it's, looks five is still slow. What what are your speeds, Joe? Well, I'm, I'm, I've am i got a really good download speed. I get around 95 or 98, but I've got a pretty bad upload. Um, I get 1.5 um, upload, max two. Right. So you're, that's on that's on cable still, right? Right. When do you go to MBN? Well, they're doing works in the streets as we speak, so I don't see it being too far from here. Yeah, is that going to be the HFC? You know, I'm not sure. I think it's going to be fibre to the curb. Right. So, what do you got coming into the house? You got uh, telephone lines or a cable? You got an actual cable? No, I have cable. HFC coming into the home. Yeah. So you should go on to. H, yes. You so you'll be on the HFC, probably fibre to the curb, and then H, then the coax. By the sounds of it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't actually explored it. I'm going to try and stay on cable for as long as I can. Yeah. Well, why is that? Oh, uh, look. You know, the the more people that move off um, the HFC cable, the faster it goes. That's you know, that's a given. Mm, yeah. So, um, and I'm just quite happy with it at the moment. Uh, I just I would rather let other people in the area connect to the NBN and, and hear about their experiences of what it's like mm. and and see who's the best provider to go with in this area because obviously you know, different providers have different bandwidths in different areas, uh, different plans. So therefore, I'm going to just sit back a little bit until they actually push me over and say, you have to connect yep. to the NBN or we're going to disconnect you. Are you you're through Optus Cable or Telstra? I'm through Optus Cable. Right, right. And Jordan, you're on NBN, I think, aren't you? Yeah. 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 What, so what's I'm on about seventy five or eighty down, about forty up. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And what what's but, that um, cost? I you? pay the extra to have that. Yeah, what's that cost you? Do you know? Oh, I think it's 
be about 100. Oh, I can't remember. I think it's about 99 bucks a month, yeah. and you pay an extra 15 dollars, and you get the, the 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 blowout speeds of up to 100. Yeah, right. And but, uh, you know, I was just listening to Joe. He was saying that um, he's on Optus, isn't he? Because the exchanges are all different. So if you've got well, the exchanges, a lot of the exchanges are the same, except for Optus, isn't it? Optus has kind of their own network, don't they? Yeah, they do. Um, most of the other hate- companies kind of all share with Optus or Telstra. They buy their their network. That, their- that, yeah, that's right. If you're on the HFC on Optus, um, you're sharing the service. And where I live, I'm at the end of the line or close to it. So, therefore, um, that remains to be seen what happens. The exchange is maybe... Oh, it's a fair few kilometres away from me, mm. um, you know, maybe you know, 10 kilometres away from me, something like that. That's a long way. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. like I said, I'm, I'm at the end of the line where I am. My exchange is only kind of a kilometre and a bit. But that shouldn't really be affecting the speeds of cable too much or MBN, you wouldn't think. It's not no. like... Because it doesn't like cable uh, goes around in a circle, so the more people jump on before you, it, yeah, the slower it goes. But I don't, I don't think it uh, it works like that with the MBN. I'm not sure. We'll find out, Joe, one day. We'll I think out. if you're on a HFC, it does. Oh, um, you, may, you may get you may get some priority. Fiber to the traffic. node. Hey, is it still fibre to the node for the HFC first? Well, it can be fibre to the curb. And then it just shoots into the house. But it's not fibre to the premise. I think you can pay... There's no node involved with the HFC, is there? Not as as the node as depicted in the the copper node. No, they do have HFC um, nodes in the area. Because it's in the curb. I'll give you an example. The the exchange um, is, um, say, Riverwood and I'm sort of towards the end of the line of that exchange, and um, you do have nodes in between that will boost the signal out. Mm. Yeah, so, but yeah, so hopefully it'll all be good. So we'll see. Who are you with, Jordan? Telstra. Yeah, okay. Why I, you... Look, to be honest, I just find Telstra more reliable. I know it's more expensive, but it's the old saying in the book is that you get what you pay for, and I know it sucks because Telstra's always got us, you know, got us where they want us in, in that department, and you end up paying more for it, mm. but... I have less problems, and I've I've been through, and I've got like well, I've got my own little servers, as you know, and I've been through the different companies and tried the different ones, and you know you have different ones blocking ports and oh like, right, yeah some right, some regulations for some and not for others, and then you get drop ins and drop outs and stuff like that. Like I've even been with companies that that pay for Telstra's network, so you think that they're you know, it's a bit like Belong, for example, being on Telstra's network. You mm. think, oh, well, they're going to be as good as Telstra, but Telstra's not probably still not going to give them the best of their network, are they? Hmm. Well, you well, know, like in the old, I think IINet uses Telstra's lines too, doesn't it? But they all belong to MBN now, anyway. And then, yeah, I suppose they do. Then that's that's what the government paid eleven so billion. IINet doesn't buy its MBN network from Telstra; it buys it from MBN. From- from MBN. Right? That's right, yeah, and that's why I think Telstra, they're, they're, I don't know, they must be panicking a little bit, mustn't they, you know, because they're competing now on a level playing field with the rest of them. But anyway, yeah. let's move off old MBN and uh, yep. let's see what Joe's got cooking in his little storybook for us this week. Okay, well, what I've got this week is that uh, you may or you may not have heard that Apple is bringing out a credit card. Um, no, I didn't, Apple yeah. has partnered with uh, the global investment bank uh, Goldman and Sash, and also with Mastercard to bring you the new Apple Card. Right, um, yeah, numberless. Yeah, the new Apple Card is made out of titanium, and it's stripped of all its normal functional numbers that that, that you see on the card normally. Um, it immediately looks different, so people around you at a supermarket or a restaurant don't need to know the particular credit card rating requirements you have um, to get an Apple Card. They just see that you're um, your card's got a debossed Apple logo on it, and they know that it's um, a person that's got disposable income, so therefore uh, you're carrying around um, a card which indicates that you're a member of the Apple Consumer Club. Right. So is it a physical card or is it just on the... Yeah. It is a physical card as well. Yeah, it's a physical card. Right. And according to Apple, the digital credit card will have no late fees, uh, no annual fees, It'll have no international fees or an interest rate. Um, 
Well, the interest rate actually they do have, but it's amongst the lowest in the industry. Right. Uh, just check the just check the fine print on that because <laughs> apparently um, it does vary according to how you um you um you get it. Is, um, is it like a an Amex type situation where you just pay it at the end of the month or something, or can you actually like use it as a a credit card and get your fifty five days interest free and all that sort of stuff? That'd be interesting. That I might read. It, it doesn't actually that. say how how that part works. Um, but I'm guessing it, it does say that you can use it like a normal credit card. Um, when you when when you buy stuff on the, on the the card, you get two percent cash back on all purchases purchases that you get. Mm. And uh, if you buy something from Apple or any of the Apple services, you get three percent back. So you get like a discount. It says uh, it says the talk Apple about, the talk interest about innovation. <laughs> the interest rates are thirteen point two four percent to 24.24 percent uh so that's about the same as competitors uh despite yeah so the spin so apple's in the i haven't seen the keynote but this must be where they announced it did they and they've said that the that, that they are lower interest rates well that's probably not exactly correct probably lower than um one company somewhere in the mi- middle of the desert charging 50 percent if apple really wants to bow blah blah blah, blah, blah. yeah so yeah, so it just looks like just a normal credit card by the sounds of it. It's just it's got a nice little apple in the corner for all the people to go, ooh. With no, with no numbers on it and it's made of titanium. I call that um, I call that innovation. So when someone yeah. says to you, can you read your when credit? When someone's scraping at the bottom, bottom of the barrel for some new hardware. When, so when you <laughs> try, reinvent the old wheel. You're trying, to re, you're trying to pay for something over the phone. They say, read me your credit card number. I don't know. Yeah. Or um, why that? Can I ask the simple question of why the hell are we trying to reinvent credit cards? Aren't we trying to get rid of them and use things like Apple Pay and through our devices? Well, I would have thought why it wasn't. I would have thought it just wasn't card? going to be a physical card because now yeah, that, like, I just thought, we okay, we're just, trying to get rid of our wallets. If only we could make our identifications and licenses and things digital as well, mm. we wouldn't have to carry a bloody wallet around with us at all. Yeah, so it looks like when's it coming? Kind of, to me, it's just it, to me, it's scraping the bottom of the barrel for something new. Did you say when it's available, Joe? Um, no, I haven't it? gotten that far yet. Um, when the Apple Card becomes available in the US later on this year, um, we don't know when it's going to come out in Australia. You can actually apply it through the Apple Wallet on your iPhone. So basically, you need to have an Apple Apple iPhone to get the Apple credit card, right? So you get instant access to a digital version of the card first that you can then use as an app on your phone. And after a short period of time, you'll get the physical card, which has a chip enabled on it. Um, but then you can start using it as a, a retail card, like so a you normal get MasterCard. An app, an app version of it as well. Yeah. Mm. Well, maybe, maybe I should have watched the, the Apple thing and would have got yeah. information rather than So the card deciphers statements into something that's easier to read for people. And for them to understand, and it automatically groups purchases into categories, and helps customers track and develop insights into their spending habits as well. And interestingly, Apple says that none of the purchasing data will be shared or sold to advertisers or any third-party brokers. I don't believe anything that any of these big companies tell me in that department of things that they're not going to sell their information. I wouldn't believe any of them at all. Mm. Well, it looks like, by the look of it, from the pictures in this article, Joe, it looks like it's backed by MasterCard. So it's a it's a MasterCard. Yeah, it is, it is backed by MasterCard. And apparently you can't sign up over a browser or anything like that. You have to use the Apple phone to connect um, to the um, actual Apple wallet and then you get the card that way. You can't do it through a browser. Right. So I'm guessing it's only for Apple users only at the moment. Yeah, well, yes, I guess so. But so the, the app, yeah, so you're applying, but MasterCard's probably doing the back-end checks. Checks and uh, crossing the T's and dotting mm-hmm. the I's. Um, yeah, that's interesting. That's something that, uh, yeah, interesting, interesting. All Are you right. going to get one, Glenn, when it comes out? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said it was interesting. Well, it is interesting. Look, uh, uh, did, it, did it have an annual fee? Oh, there's no annual fees. Apple promises to have to, you won't have to pay any fees. This means no annual fees, no international fees. Yes, yeah, so I know annual fees. I, I'm all in for cards with no annual Initially, fees. Initially, but you can't tell me that down the track they well, won't add. Look, I might have been a bit hesitant there to say no. I have got a MasterCard through somewhere, Macquarie Bank. 
Now the only oh, yeah. now the only reason I got it through Macquarie Bank was because it's one of the only cards I could find that don't charge you a, a three percent fee when you purchase something overseas, right? So mm. all the others will charge you this three percent, which annoys me to no end. And so I found this Mastercard that didn't. So no annual fee, no three percent. If the Apple Card went along that same line, I could, you know, yes, I possibly could. I want to look cool without the fees. So. <laughs> Yes. Oh, if you want to look cool without the feast, then, you know, go, to, go for Apple. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Who wouldn't go to Apple after uh, listening to Oprah? And it's the coolest, it's the coolest side of things to be on. Oh, yeah. You know, you got to have that uh, the Apple card in your wallet for sure. All right. Um, did you find anything, Jordan? What have you got to talk about? Or are you just happy to poke around? <laughs> I'm happy to plodding along, but I did find something that was a little bit um, interesting, um, a bit funny. Was what We were talking about it earlier. It said... On Sunday, and I don't know if this is the, the right way to say it, but on Sunday, Redditor Theral Justin, that's a kind of a weird mm. pronounced name, anyway, published a post in the Google Home, is it subreddit uh, reporting, that when he said thank you to John Legend uh, to his Google Home, the mini assistant voice switched on John Legend's voice to say you're very welcome. John Legend or John Lennon? No, John Legend's. Oh, I thought you said before the show. I thought you said John Lennon. I went, oh, that'd be cool. I don't even know who John Legend is. Who's John? <laughs> who's John Legend? It Not- just sounds like we're going to have, you know, celeb. Well, John Legend. Okay, um, I have to. You have, you're going to test my music skills now. I know exactly who he is. I just can't think of the names of the songs. Hang on. Uh, bring up his name, and I'll tell you what song he sings. Uh, oh. I've never heard of John Legend. I have I have heard of him. I wouldn't know if I fell over him, though. But um, but that'd be interesting. Look, uh, he's got that high pitch voice. Oh yeah, all um, all of me, lay me down. Duh. Um, yeah. Do you know? You don't know any of those songs? I'm just trying to, <laughs> no. trying to find a song. What was it? Um, you know, here we go. Look, here's a picture of him. Oh, this. Yeah, I don't know. I John can... Legend, songwriter. Yeah, he's all of me. Loves all of you. You know that one? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah right. Well, I, I, well, I would have liked this story better if it had been John Lennon, to be honest. But, yeah, well, of course, naturally. But I, I suppose mean, who wouldn't? But just the <laughs> fact that Google Assistant is now piping up and, and using celebrity voices, I reckon that's unreal. Yeah, yeah, you know? that's, that's I good. I wonder if I could get a Google Assistant and it says... You know, when I say hello, um, Glad Goodman gets on and says, hi, folks. <laughs> I'd have to sit down and do all the, uh, the the word recordings. That'd be pretty cool. Remember That'd when funny. I think when uh, Tom Baker did the, the voice the voicemail recordings for British Telecom? So, you know, when it goes, hi, you've got voicemail or something, you know, when you ring the voicemail number. Yeah, yeah so you imagine that being you on the other end? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be oh, fantastic. It would be, wouldn't it? Hey? Yeah. yeah, that'd be I'll great. Ring up and, and you'd be, hi, you've got, you, you're, yeah, with your voice. Yeah, hi, you've got voicemail. <laughs> Click here to open it up. And don't yeah. forget to register your hosting with Aussie Tech <laughs> okay. But John John Lennon would be awesome, but, he, you know, he wouldn't do it. Mm. Um, Imagine if Michael Jackson was on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, there's probably a few jokes there, but I don't know if I could say <laughs> That's them. Why I said um, it. Yeah. That's why I said it. I didn't. <laughs> Didn't bring the jokes up. I just opened up the uh, platform <laughs> yes. for the jokes. That's all. Yeah, something about pushing and buttons and yeah. All right, Facebook cares about It'd your. Be pl- like, <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, Facebook again. They, they're getting into a bit of trouble lately, aren't they? But th- this time, oh. Facebook has uh, stored. They're all getting in trouble. Doesn't matter who they are. They're, any big business like that gets in trouble. Yeah, well, even, they... I mean, even Huawei was in trouble the other week, and then Google, and then Facebook, and then Twitter, and then yeah. So, but it depends what for. It. I think, like I, I, I think the Google one where you know they're getting told what to do with their own business and services that can get a little bit hard to swallow for me. Uh, but this one here with Facebook, this this particular one, they've stored millions of numbers, millions of customers' passwords in plain text on their really? yeah on their Facebook <laughs> servers. Uh, so pa- hey, I'm kind of gobsmacked by that. Why the well accounts? Why it's such a big Big, big company like that be storing well, passwords in plain text? Well, this is this is the question. Accounts, passwords for hundreds of millions of Facebook users have been housed in plain text and searchable by thousands of Facebook employees since 2012. 
So they've said that this, you know, that this uh, particular database wasn't available to the public, which was probably good. But you know, they, you don't know. So thousands of Facebook staff is a good start, isn't it? Yeah. So an internal probe. Hmm. Uh, I'd hope to never be on the end of one of those. Uh, found that Facebook staffers had been building applications that logged unencrypted password data and stored it in plain text on an internal server. The investigation so far suggests that between 200 million and 600 million users, which well, they've got about a billion on their platform now, so that's a good half of users, uh, have had their account password stored in plain text and searchable by over 20,000 employees. The part, apparently, well, Facebook spun it that the passwords were never visible to anyone outside of Facebook. But, you know, you know, but how many Facebook employees is there? Well, 20,000 odd. But you're telling mm. me that not one of them has been interested in those passwords? Yeah, so who's to say they haven't just taken Especially it? Especially when people out there use the same passwords for everything. Well, they take a little copy of them, give it to Julian Assange, and away he goes. Probably how he gets all his stuff. Oh, He's imagine pro- how much money that staff member could make on the side. Well, Gee, well, this is probably right. Like, but anyway, the this password storage issue came three months after they disclosed it had allowed third party applications to improperly access photos from up to six point eight million users. Uh, the bug affected as many fifteen hundred apps here. Yeah, blah blah blah. Uh, three months before that, Facebook revealed that attackers had exploited a vulnerability in the social media's code to potentially take over nearly fifty million people's accounts. So, yeah, look, there's a lot of. I, look, I, I, do you find yourself that? Well, I find myself using it less and less. I just don't use it as much. I just can't be bothered. I think I read the news feed instead of reading a book, but then I go to bed. I don't. I don't dwell on it or post on it. Or no, I'll post every now and then, but only to share something, say like with family, and or I suppose friends can see that. But it's pretty much. You know, it's getting it's getting full of more and more junk. I just hate the share as people just reshare and reshare and reshare and reshare yeah. and reshare. There's no, there's nothing with much substance on there, really, is there? No, and like how many how many like personal messages do you get which are the same sort of jokes? Just go, I haven't even got time to. I I just just. Open and then you feel rude just, if you yeah. don't look at them because it shows. Oh, I've got over that. It shows got... the other user that you haven't seen it. Well, I, I well, it says that you've seen it, but you haven't responded. I don't care. You, you, there's nothing that says to the other user, "I've already seen this ten times from ten of my other friends." Yeah, I, to the point I don't care. I just go <laughs> and just yeah, put it just... aside. And just, yeah, I'm using it less and less. But are you a Facebook user, Joe? Well, yes, you are, aren't you? Because you're on there. Yeah, I use Facebook. Yeah. I even let the friends request sit there for months before I decide to accept them as well. Yeah, I get a lot of bogus ones. You know, mm. as soon as you see tits, you go, that's bogus. You have a, a bit of a look first, but that's uh, bogus. Uh, as soon as you see what? Tits. Oh. Like, <laughs> they, they send, you go, oh, who's just this? I kind of double take. I'm like, did he just say that? That's yeah. right. <laughs> well, you know, milk it's bottles. you live in Queensland, you're used to it. It's milk, kind of, milk bottles. Um, no yeah. But as soon, like, as soon as you see them, well, you go, well, okay, well, it's going to be bogus, isn't it? So why am I wasting my time? I just go, I go, report block in the one thing, go, report block, yeah. go, go away. There's nothing, of, there's not really much of substance. No, that's right. Uh, all right, Joe, um, any comments on that or do you want to move on to your next one? Uh, I'll move on to the next one. Out, Facebook land wants to have a comment. Don't, don't forget you can, you can call, call in and... Um, have a have have your say right now if you want. You you could. You, you, what happens though is you go into the lounge and we'll invite you in very soon. But if you want, we might we might do it next week. We might just put the number up on the screen or up on the I've Facebook page. On Facebook. Oh, okay. So I'm not. I won't repeat it every five seconds. It's in the comments. The number on Facebook. All right, but it's o two eight o. I typed it in as you said it. O two eight o one five two o double eight. All right. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Joe. I mean, Jordan. I mean, Joe. If anybody's interested, no, no, no pressure. No one has to. You don't have to call in at all. Yes, we you just do. Thought it might be nice that, that we just thought it might be nice to offer that that facility uh, for free, of course. If you don't <laughs> ring in, we're going to jump through your speakers and rip your bloody arms off. You know how but it wait, goes. More. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, sorry, Joe. Sorry, I was trying to get a bit carried away there. Sorry, Joe. Go. That's all right. Yeah, look, there's this prank going around from Twitter um, saying that if you turn um, your back to 2007, uh, you um, you most likely will get kicked off for being... Um, if you don't change back to 2007, you most likely get kicked off for not being under, under, 18, under 13. 
Yes. Well, that's yeah. that's that's. So you're saying change it, change your birth date in Twitter? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So a viral prank is trying to get people to change their Twitter birth oh, date to 2007. Yeah. Is getting users locked out of the platform for being under 13. <laughs> so they're tricking them to say because they're stupid to realise that you know that that that's under 18, so they get locked out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I oh. should do that too. I should tell my kids that. I should say, you, they, they've been told that if you don't change it, <laughs> and then they'll all get locked out and I won't have to worry about them anymore. <laughs> well, it must be, I think it's pretty hard to come back, isn't it? Because you, then you have to send them an email and you have to wait and wait and wait. So probably send them another five and wait and wait I did and wait. That with, I did that with PlayStation. I registered my boy's um, PlayStation account mm. um, and so that he so that he could have his own account on the PlayStation without using mine. And uh, so I put his birth year in, and now he's restricted on all the games, and I can't change his birth year. And I, I rang up PlayStation Australia and said, "This is ridiculous. He's been locked out of all the games, and I've got no say, yeah, over what he can and can't play. Even though there's an option in there for me to choose what age limit he's allowed to use." Can you can, just they say- said it's in their terms and conditions, and they can't allow it if a child's account. Even if I go, I can't even even if I change his birth date or set the age restriction that I want to allow for that account. They don't allow it. So why not set him up just another account? I'd have to create another account. And they said, and then they said it'd be a breach of terms and conditions if I lied and said he was older than what he is. Oh my God. Yeah, right. They put the, they put the feature in the PlayStation there where you can actually say, I want to allow ages over 18 on this account, but because his birth date is not, they say in their terms and conditions, they can't allow it. It's a a contradiction of. So how do they know? Why can't you just make up a fake one? You can make a fake one, but the lady said to me, she goes, you can make a fake one or he can use yours or you can make a fake one. But if you do that, that's breach of terms and conditions and And we don't, we won't support that and and all this sort of stuff. Right. What if, if you want trying to get a refund of or something at some stage? No, no. Just that if I let him play games that are over 15 and he's only 13, then that's my it, – it's yeah. me lying about his age is a breach of their terms and conditions and I can oh, be, kicked, be kicked off. Yeah, right. Look, look – yeah, look – Even like, though in the settings you can – you can in your parental lock section, yeah. you can specify what age restriction games you want your yes. child to be able to have access to. Yes. But because I put his birth date in, those age restriction games are irrelevant. It doesn't work. Oh, yes. Yeah, well, that – probably pretty poor because um well i know the xbox doesn't work like that i set up is with the family uh connections whatever you want to call it and uh yeah I, i've still got control over the games i found it quite limiting i've had i had to push the kids to um like pretty much open just to get them to be able to play Fortnite. i don't know if Fortnite's age limited or not yeah it but- is my, my boy couldn't play Fortnite, so i had to install i had to when i created the account it automatically created an account for Fortnite, which was different to his so i had to Somehow disconnect his Fortnite, his Fortnite or my Fortnite account from my account, and then connect his Fortnite to my account. Right. Well, it's got his age restriction. His account, his actual PlayStation account, wouldn't let him play it. Well, we've got here. I just looked it up. the The rating looks like the restriction is rating of twelve. I don't know what that means. Is that like twelve? Oh yeah, twelve persons under twelve years of age. Uh, oh, jeez. So put the birth date in when you create the PlayStation account. They can't play it. And it doesn't matter how you allow the age restriction games in the parental controls, they still can't play it. Mm. Yeah, geez, I don't know about that. Like, you yeah, st- the only way that'll change is when he gets older. I can't change what, um, the birthday. Couldn't you say that you, you sneezed as you're typing your, the birthday in? And No, they won't change it. Yeah. They won't change the birthday. You've got to do another account. So you've got to make another account. Yeah. And it's, it's so stupid. But So I had to literally link... It was really difficult. I had to get onto the Fortnite account online and disconnect the auto- automatically created account that was made by PlayStation and then connect his. And to even disconnect that auto-created one, I had to try and find email addresses that it was created under and, mm, and then yeah. activation codes. And de- It was really quite difficult to get it disconnected. Mm. Yeah, okay. Well, that's the, that's the pro- that's don't make a mistake then. Or well, well, you so did make, make a mistake. mistake. If you want your kid to be able to play all the games on your PlayStation, don't put his birth date in. Not the real one. No. Got to make him 18. And yeah. then so put it in and make him 18, but then go into your parental restrictions and, and set the That's age limit. limit you want to specify. 
That's that a bit you crazy. Appropriate for your own child. Yeah. If you put your birth date, then you'll get the. So if you put the kid's birth date, then you'll get PlayStation's rules. That's, that's just wacky. But it is, isn't it? It's kind yeah. of stupid. But sticking with, have you finished with that one, Joe? Yeah, I cut him off there because we were talking about age limits. So don't go and put your to the, don't don't go and put your your year of your birth date on Twitter. It's two thousand and seven. No, no. Or you get kicked out for being underage. Yeah, is that all with that one, Joe? Yeah, that's fine. That's it. Oh, well, st- st- sticking with. I love that. I'm going to do that to my kids. They're going to tell them that there was a notification. They've got to change their birth year, or they're going to get locked out. Well, sticking with uh, games, Google's revealed a gaming platform called Stadia. Stadia. I don't know how you would want to pronounce it. it looks like Stadia to me. S T A D I A. Uh, so they've unveiled its new digital platform, which will stream better than console quality games that have traditionally had to be either downloaded or purchased on disc. So this will be interesting. Mm. Uh, at launch, it's going to work on existing desktop, laptops, TVs, and phones. It looks like a traditional console gamepad, but the Stadia version, or Stadia, I'm going to, how do you, how would you pronounce that? Stadia? <laughs> Stadia? Stadia, Stadia. But the Stadia version Stadia. has a button for, ca- Stadia. Stadia. see, this is where, you, this is where it all begins. So if, now that, if I start calling it Stadia, it will be forever more Stadia. I will never change it. It doesn't matter what happens. This is the genesis of how I say a word. Okay, so it's Stadia. It's like, it's like um, Nginx, isn't it? There's a- one for you. Nginx? Is it in- Nijix? Nginx? Oh, like yeah, the okay. Apache, op- the Apache thing? A- Apache. Equivalent? In, 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 so like the Indians. <laughs> what is it? N, N, G, I, N, X. N, I call it. N, Jinx. Yeah, N, Jinx. I call, I call it N, Gen X. <laughs> <laughs> I call it N, Jinx. Okay, so anyway, it's back you to jinxed st- it. We've back- jinxed it now. Back to Stadia. It was also announced that uh, <laughs> uh, the first major title is going to be Doom Eternal. Uh, no pricing was revealed uh, at the event in San Francisco, but they said it's going to launch in 2019 in the UK. Canada and Europe to start with. So gamers have complained. Now this is they're going to they've addressed the issue of lag. So gamers have complained with the issues of lag, the delay between a player performing an action and the game reaching or reacting to that move. So in an attempt to avoid this, Google said that Stadia controller would connect directly to the internet, communicating with Google servers independently from the other hardware. So I guess if you're oh, what's this? If you're going, you got the controller and you're you uh, might you might be looking at it through your PC, then the controller has actually connected to the internet rather than the computer. Uh, so I'm not sure how much lag they're going to save with that. But anyway, uh, the company has promised the service will offer games at 4K rev- resolution, 60 frames per second, and up to 8K, 120, fa- 120 frames per second in the future. So during an on-stage demonstration, Google demonstrated how someone viewing a video on YouTube could press play on Stadia, Stadia button and begin playing the title within seconds. So they reckon like a lot of, you know, the benefit for this is, you know, like kids, like my kids just watch people, other people playing games. You know, they watch them on YouTube and they're saying, well, now there'll be a button will come on, you go play and you, know, you must have to have, have a subscription or something and you'll be taken to the game and you'll be in the game. Just, you know, as quick as that. That's amazing, it's, isn't it? Yeah, or not the game on the that you're watching, but you know, but you play the game. Yeah, or, or maybe if it's a live stream, yeah, I, I suppose that you could go there. You could go there if it's a live game stream. Uh, yeah, so that sounds interesting. So the controller looks looked to me pretty much like the the normal Xbox slash PlayStation controller these days, and uh, interesting that the controller hooked to the internet. It's like the Google Chromecast, you know, where if you if you want to cast something from your phone. The, the Chromecast takes over. It connects to the internet, not your phone, so it takes over. Uh, so, look, that's that's the way to go. But I'm not sure how much lag they're going to save by doing that. Like, do you reckon it'd be much? I don't reckon it'd be much. Like, from your controller to the computer to the internet, they've got to come up... They've got to come up with other things than that. Have we got a caller? 702. Who's 702? Is that you? I was just testing you. <laughs> See, I'm onto it. I am onto You're it. On it. <laughs> I am. I could hear you talking for a couple of seconds, and then uh, it, it said, "You cannot listen, or you cannot view the whole the the host until he lets you in." I'm yeah. Like, okay. See, so don't but it bother. Did ask me for the. Uh, it did ask me for the um, 
the the uh, what do you call it? The meeting, oh, the meeting room. room. I didn't post on the uh, Facebook. Oh right, we'll have to do that. Well, see, that's something else. I wonder how many people tried to ring in and couldn't do it. Uh, <laughs> they need the meeting room. Okay, see, live and learn. All right, uh, Joe. Sorry to distract you from your. Uh... That's all right. I was near the end of that story anyway. See, I, I knew what's going on. I just thought I'd check in and see if it's working. Yeah, I've got that all under control. Uh, Joe, what else have you got cooking? Uh, that's it. That's it for tonight, mate. Oh, okay, cool. I thought you had another one. What was that? What's the Scooty? Are you going to do the Scooty? Uh, no, I don't have enough information. Oh, okay, no worries. Um, all right, so I've got one more then to to finish off to round this out. Let's go MySpace. We all remember MySpace talking about social media platforms. I've well, got a, I've got a story too. When you're done, still, so it's all good. All right. Well, we'll do this one, and then we'll end up end with Jordan's. But anyway, My, MySpace admits to now for those young people out there, MySpace used to be more popular than Facebook. It was before Facebook, and it was sort of long, around went along the same sort of lines, didn't it? You had your first friend was Tom, and you know he was sitting there giving you the thumbs up like this. And uh, yeah, so you know, it was uh, it was it was around for a while, but it was apparently in 2006. It was the it was the most visited site in the US, beating out Google. That's how big it was. So anyway, uh, MySpace on a website it says that any photos, videos, and audio files uploaded more than three years ago may no longer be available. So MySpace turned in from being the social media platform once Facebook kicked its backside into the gutter, and so then it sort of morphed into this sort of hang for musicians and artists and all that and they all bumped up there uploaded their music and all that sort of stuff there'd been complaints going back several months that links uh, to music were no longer working uh, myspace popularity waned uh in since it was founded in 2003 uh, but in its prime yeah it attracted millions of users now this guy andy bayo who helped build the kickstarter crowdfunding site he's a bit skeptical of what's going on over there at MySpace, because the, the reason that MySpace lost all 12 years' worth of stuff was they did a uh, server migration. And, uh, ooh, you know, obviously got the wrong people in, and bang, all this 12 years' worth of stuff died. Like, I'd be pretty annoyed with that if I was them. But he, anyway, he questions, uh, he tweeted that the loss could amount to some 50 million tracks by 14 million artists over this period, so which is quite a bit. Uh, he also questioned whether the loss was accidental. He says, uh, flagrant incompetence may be bad PR, but it sounds better than we can't be bothered with the effort and cost of uh, migrating and hosting 50 million uh, old MP3s. MySpace was bought by News Corp in 2005 for 580 million. Right, big number, big number. But then it was later sold in 2011... So what? Six years later, for thirty-five million, that's a good loss, isn't it? I heard Justin Timberlake bought it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. Uh, so what did it say? It was sold in two thousand eleven for thirty-five to and an. He spent the money. To an ad targeting firm, Specific Media. So I don't know if that was him or not, but yeah, you're right. Like, geez, they they, they took a hit with that one. Old News Corp. They got heaps anyway. I wonder how many users they've got and whether how, how current it still is. Like, I wonder if it still goes. Yeah, well, I've still... Well, uh, I'm a user on, on, on MySpace, but I don't think I've logged in there in years, so I'm a dead user. Like, yeah, I think I logged in. I've logged in oh, randomly over the time. I don't even know. It would have been here. probably 10 years ago since I've looked at it. Yeah, sign up, Easy. sign in. I don't know if I can even sign in. Let's try and sign in with Facebook. You must log oh, in. Well, I'll try this and see what happens. See if I can log... Oh, can you... Okay. Okay. Oh, our terms have changed. Okay. Yeah. Blah blah blah. In ten years, I'm sure they have. I agree. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like it's just full of. They had to add to the terms and conditions that now that Justin Timberlake owns it, you can't stalk him. So let's see if I can find. There's well, there's no. I can't even find my account uploads. No, nothing there. Signing to MySpace with face with Facebook. Is that what I just said? Yeah, there's nothing there. Maybe I should have signed in with just like an email address. I might have a look at that later. But uh, you know what was really cool about MySpace in the old days was that you were able to make your your MySpace page really website kind of friend like it. You could really dull it up and make it your own, customize it. Whereas with now, I think that 
the reason Facebook got so popular was because it simplified that that for the people who didn't know how to do all that stuff with MySpace, like mm. they could just use it for basic communications and statuses, which is kind of where Twitter came from as well, isn't it? Twitter was kind of just the just the status part of it, wasn't it? There's nothing else you can really do on Twitter. Yeah, I don't think I can. Yeah, I don't know if I can sign in with a. Uh, uh, we just like this. Du, 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 du. Let's try. Du, 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 du. No, I can't sign in, so I don't know what it is. But anyway, there's nothing much there. Last time I looked, there was a few old, 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 old Aussie tech head shows up there, I think. But uh, obviously they're not there now. I must have been lost with 12, million, 12 years worth of losses. All right, let's get into your last story. Uh, yeah, I've actually got, a, I've, got a, I've got I've got about three. I'm going to cap each one of them. The first one I'm going to cap is just quickly um, Xiaomi, exam- uh, because we're always talking about Xiaomi. Mm. Xiaomi has developed a fast charger that is able to charge a smartphone with 100 watts of power. In a video posted uh, that was spotted by XDA developers, the 4,000 milliamp phone showing charging from empty to 100% in 17 minutes. Yeah, right. That's, That's pretty fast. The fastest charger we've ever tested was Oppo's 50 watt supercharger, and it charged a three 3,700 milliamp battery to 65% in the same time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so go, Xiaomi. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, look, I reset my uh, my Xiaomi uh, uh, network settings the other day. Now I've lost my hotspot. <laughs> I don't know where I went to get those little codes to well, put I back had, in. I've got that written down somewhere. I'll dig it out for you after the show. Oh yeah, okay, thanks. Well, yeah, so it sort of annoyed me, you know. Like, you know, I don't use the hotspot too much, but I needed it this morning, and yeah, she didn't. Want yeah, well, I'll dig it out. It. Like I said, I've got a little note written somewhere, and then another one is at the same time Apple was promoting its new streaming TV offerings, which everybody's confused about price on because Apple's only given us a little bit of information, but it has come out either way. Um, a massive amount of security fixes, along with the newest operating system, uh, fifty one to be exact security fixes so they're suggesting update your app software right right perhaps the most notable fix apple patched a flaw that could allow malicious applications to access the microphone on your iphone and record you and those around you now just that's put, just one of the vulnerabilities that's in that's been addressed in this fix i just pulled up the apple site and just showing you the uh you know the front page splashed all over the show is our vision for television blah blah yeah good yeah. on them but then it's got this text underneath here I just think, do you think that's just really, I don't know, that's just really an unattractive blob of text, which is very yeah, unapple like They've it together, haven't they? What does it say? Which it says, oh, well, I'm, not, I'm not commenting about what it says. I'm saying just the way it looks. It's like in H. You like think it, Apple would have, yeah. Yeah, it's in H, what, H1. So it's, it's, it's sort of like a heading style text. It's bold, it's thick, it's black. Um, it's just like like a word, you know, when you load up a WordPress site and you just go for gold and you don't know what you're doing. Just go, oh, you make that, that size. I, don't, I think that looks pretty poor from Apple. I'm not happy. Yeah, I, it is. I wouldn't it? be happy with that. That's, that's just that's just. I wouldn't me. be happy with these fixes too. They've listed a couple of others here that there's a FaceTime fix that's in there that your FaceTime um, chats don't stop. You pause and leave the app. Right. And other fixes are loophole that allowed users access to sensitive information in the Messenger app. Right. Um, so that's just to name a few. So they reckon update that operating system. Oh, sorry, Glenn, I just wanted to finish that story off. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you got all you got to operate stuff all the show all the time, haven't you? Um, yeah. And yeah. then Huawei has unveiled uh, during Huawei's P three O launch event on Paris on Tuesday. The company went all out on accessories as well as two new phones. The company unveiled unveiled its um, its own take on the Apple's AirPods. Two new editions of the GT smartwatch and some smart specs. Mm-hmm. Um, built with the help of a Korean eyewear company, Gentle Monster, Huawei Smart Glasses, mark a foray, in, a foray into the new product company of the Chinese phone maker. Uh, expected to launch in July 2019, the glasses will allow you to take calls and listen to music in stereo thanks to the beam-forming technologies. No pricing is available yet. Um, in our brief face on time with the glasses, we found that the lightweight found them to be lightweight and probably just slightly heavier than the usual eyewear, and a little and a little big for this woman's fairly average size face. I'm reading this pretty quick. Um, <laughs> but what was impressive though is that obviously 
is, is sorry, what was impressive though is that there's absolutely no discernible sign of any technology at all. No buttons, no bulges, and the naked eye, uh, and to the naked eye, naked eye, it would be impossible to distinguish them from smart glasses or from normal glasses. Blah 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 blah. I'm trying to get this done quick. As you said, you know, look, I'm just, I'm just, just while I'm you're reading, I'm looking at it faster than I'm reading it. Look, while you're reading that, I was just having a bit of a play with the website. That's pretty good. They've got glasses that um, you can't tell that they're digital. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. But while you so were no doing buttons and not bulgy and kind of discreet. But while you were doing that, I was looking at the consumer dot Huawei dot com slash au phones site. <laughs> and it's it is some it's quite irritating but it's nice as well like as you scroll so it's you know the page scroll but you're actually scrolling those phones there's pictures of phones that are moving up the screen and that's actually me scrolling so they're scrolling and then okay so you can come down there's a lot of scrolling going on not much going on but come down here there's a bit down here that I wanted to have a look at that part yeah, there's good podcast <laughs> yeah but look at this look how good that is. that phone so i'm scrolling i bring a phone into the shot and then as i scroll the phone zooms on the page that's pretty cool that's good i, yeah. I, don't, I don't mind that so what you're what you're saying is why can't apple do something like that oh no I, no i'm just saying that uh, that's pretty cool and look at see that scroll actually zooms in and out like that yeah, yeah have a look at it you you won't know what i mean until oh, i can see what you're doing yeah, yep. on Facebook, it's impressive. Yeah, it's good. They, they've, they've made their website look good and very attractive, whereas the other page you showed us of Apple's TV thing was very plain and. Yeah, so this was that web page was for the Huawei P30 and the P30 Pro. If you're looking oh, for, oh, you're it. on that page. Bring up their glasses so you can show our listeners there if they can see it. Oh, I don't know if there was any. Like. Oh, well, that's the phone, phones, laptops, wearables. It's a new wearable. Yeah, a bit uh, wearable. There's watches. More products. The free buds. Yeah, they've got earbuds as well to compete with AirPods. Right. And so they, they obviously work on the Android. Do, they just, do, so yeah. do these just work with Android or just with the Huawei phones? Or because they're Huawei on Android, they'll work with well, any Android? they Android, I'd reckon, wouldn't they? They'd have to be. It didn't say. I didn't read any further. Yeah, uh, so Bluetooth. Well, two new smartwatches offer updates to the existing timepiece lineup. First up is the Sportier Active Edition with the 46 millimeter watch face. There is also a version within uh, with a 42 millimeter face. The Elegant Edition, which is which, as the name suggests, is a sleeker, more sophisticated watch. Uh, both watches feature Huawei's uh, try 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 Blah, blah blah. Doesn't say any more about the about the eyewear though. So Have what you found are, the eyewear on their page? The eyewear. Yeah. The uh the the what do you call it? The glasses. No accessories. Yeah, no, there's the buds. Phone accessories. No, there's the buds, but that's about it. Hang on, I'll I'm just posting you the link. I was just opening up Messenger. Hang on. Oh, I'll probably I'm just pasting it in now, and you can click on it and open it, and then uh, they'll be able to see what I'm talking about. It's already come through to you. Oh, hang on, I have to get my Facebook open. Let's have it, mate. So uh, Facebook, yeah. So the wearables, eh? That those Huawei seems to be going, getting into all this sort of stuff. Because I would mind getting a pair of those things if they work with the Android. Yeah, the glasses sound really cool. That they, you know, done no buttons, and can you can listen to your music and. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Glasses. What they say take phone calls and everything, all with your glasses. Yeah. So here we go. I'll, I'll bring this to. I couldn't get that message. You must have put it in the page. Uh, so yeah. So there we go. There's oh, the glasses. Oh, did I not hit send? I didn't hit send. <laughs> there it is. It's oh, discovered. okay. Well, I found the page I anyway. It, but I didn't send it. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. I'm That's. They look like the the uh, the glasses that the Sonic glasses that the thirteenth, twelfth Doctor wore. Peter yeah, Capaldi. Have you got them on the screen? I you know, suppose they'll come up yeah. on Facebook in a minute, won't they? I can't see your screen because you're still frozen. Yeah, so that's what that's what they're doing. Oh, there they are on Facebook now. There's a bit of a delay, a bit of a time difference. Yeah, oh, that's all right. All right, lovely. Yep. Up to date. Thanks for that. That's uh, interesting. Yeah. All right. Any I comments, like Joe, on I glasses? Like I don't like the look of the glasses at all, but I like the, the fact that they, they say in the article there that um, – what was it? Uh, the main the main line I read. What was it? Uh, 
Uh, what, yeah, what was impressive, though, is that there's absolutely no discernible sign of any technology at all. Yeah, no, right. but, no bulges. And to the naked eye, it would be impossible to dis- distinguish them as smart glasses at all. Mm, there's no NFC on board, but anyway. We get, we'll, we'll We've come a long that. way since the days of Google Glass. Um, Joe, what, what are you, what's your comments on Huawei and glasses and watches and earbuds? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen it before, and um, I don't plan on getting any of those glasses. No, no. no. <laughs> I probably wouldn't might, wouldn't mind the earbuds though if they were cheap enough. I don't. I know. would only get the glasses if they can add my prescription to them. That's what I'm waiting for. Technology, yeah. with the, they can just set the prescription in your glasses. Yeah, that'd be week. pretty cool. That'd be good, wouldn't it? That would be good. Yeah. Why someone hasn't done that, I don't know. You should be able to just punch yeah. in your code or something. Again, the the glasses change their their yeah. uh, focus mm. to surprise. Oh. Or why the hell don't we have our prescription, <coughs> our prescriptions for our glasses as um as screen protectors for our phones? Wouldn't have to wear glasses at all. Why can't I lay a piece of glass yeah. over my phone that's got my my uh, Will that work? Would that so work? So I could then look at my phone without my glasses on and see what I'm reading. But would that work though? Hey, would that work? <laughs> Why wouldn't it? So you could put your glasses on the phone. You could try it, I suppose, couldn't you? And see if it works. Maybe the distance might be yeah, well. might have to be different. I don't know. But why why couldn't you just get a, a gorilla glass protector for your phone with your prescription of <laughs> glasses? That'd be. I'd put it on everything. I'd put it on my television, on, on my put phone, it, on my iPad, and everywhere I went. Put it around the world. <laughs> yeah, why not? I'll get a, I'll get a windscreen from a car with my glasses prescription in it. <laughs> So I can drive around without glasses on. That'd be the go. All right, yeah. let's get out of here. Uh, we're, we're, we're up to date. We've brought everyone up to date. That's all that, that we've found this week. I think it was pretty much dominated by Apple stuff, so thankfully we didn't get bogged down in too much Apple stuff this week. You can see all that. You know, Watch the keynote if you're interested. Yeah, get on to uh, CNET or something. They'll yeah, have it all. Or yeah, watch the, have the whole show on there somewhere. Yeah, watch the Aussie Mac Zone. Or the, the whole show's on the Apple side anyway. So, so yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, just, and watch it through the, the glorious QuickTime uh, <laughs> plug in, but anyway, that's good. All right, thanks, uh, Jordan. Good to see yeah, you. No back. worries, I finally made it in this week. Yeah, good stuff. Thanks, Joe. Good to see you that's in again. You later. Yeah, we'll see you next week. And uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Facebook. And we'll uh, see if we can get some calls in next time. We might uh, mention the room, hey? Might make it a bit easier <laughs> rather than just floating around in, in Zoom space, knocking on doors. Wait, wait, can I come into this chat? Can I come into this chat? Yeah. But uh, okay, so we'll do that next week. Good and to see Christopher. He's always there, isn't he, Christopher? I think he's on every week. Yeah, yeah. He, Maybe he, Christopher might like to call in next week. We, you can, he's you can, always there. You can now, Chris, on the phone. And you can you can tell us what your your thoughts are, and uh, yeah. So uh, happy holidays to Chris. All right, <laughs> okay, all let's right. go. All right, we'll see you all next week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for downloading. And blah 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 blah. All right, uh, who's the sharks got this week? I forget. I don't know. Don't ask me. Oh, I don't know. I forget. But anyway, go sharks. See you. Bye. <laughs> see you, mate. Good night.